this is when um, our image of the women, the, the suffragettes, that's from this period. Uh, and then we also see uh, during, it was also when the first um, uh, voting was given to women in a number of countries during that period. And Virginia Woolf starts uh, emerging as a, as a major, um, uh, she and the Bloomsbury set kind of emerge right at that point. You've got, um, the, in music, you've got Mahler and Stravinsky uh, uh, are, are starting to, you know, again, this kind of new elemental power is starting to come in. And same thing in painting, where you've got it starting to come into uh, Picasso and this, again, uh, you know, this impulse to, for radical change and for innovation, breaking through previous uh, um, ways of, uh, of art artistic expression. Also, the, the, um, this is when uh, radical socialism wide, uh, becomes widespread at this point. The uh, beginning of the Menshevik uh, party, the Bolshevik party, the uh, major socialist parties in France and uh, the United States and England, Italy and so forth, they're all founded right during this, that alignment. And then when you get to the 1960s, the radical political movements just uh, spread like wildfire. And, People like um, you know Che and, and Castro uh, and the um, uh, the Red Guards and the and the um, Cultural Revolution and, and Marxism is and the Students for a Democratic Society uh, with radical socialist or radical um, political views are very widespread during the 1960s. So again, it's a synchronic and diachronic pattern. So. Generally, uh, we see the square, um, it's a 10 to 12 degree orb that typically we start uh, seeing the major phenomena happening. And in fact, this has already started to occur. Um, uh, 2006, 2007 is when it started um, getting within orb. And it's quite striking how it, astrologers knew the Uranus-Pluto square was coming. This is uh, for years, obviously. Uh, and we have known that this is the first major dynamic alignment or aspect of these two planets since the 1960s. But when we were discussing this in 2002 or 2003, 2004, one didn't have a sense of anything happening. I mean, we knew theoretically, in terms of the diachronic patterns, it should be happening pretty soon coming up for the, you know, the, uh, after 2007, 2008, we should be seeing these kinds of uh, cultural phenomena. But you didn't feel it anywhere. Uh, the, the sense of was, was that the revolution was dead in the water, was kind of the feeling. And of course, during this period of 2001, 2004, Saturn was opposite Pluto. And then uh, that was the period of 9-11 you know, and the Iraq war invasion uh, and um, the empowerment of the uh, conservative right uh, wing in, in, uh, with the Bush administration and so forth. And then right after that, the Saturn opposition to Neptune took place, which was a, kind of put a wet blanket of demoralization uh, as well as skepticism. Uh, the two went together uh, into the collective um, psyche. But quite strikingly, beginning around uh, 2006, 2007, you started feeling, we all started feeling the, the tremors of something new, an empowerment of youth. We, I haven't mentioned that, but the empowerment of youth is a very typical um, correlation with the Uranus-Pluto um, alignments, because Uranus and the Promethean impulse have to do with um, that part of the human community that carries innovation, which youth, of course, is especially uh, likely to, to carry. So typically, these periods do coincide with the empowerment of youth. And in fact, it was right during these last couple of years that we started sensing it with, for example, the Obama um, uh, rise uh, to prominence politically uh, was to a, an important extent carried by uh, the the renewed activism in the political sphere by, by, by youth who had not renewed since the 1960s. There had, this generation had not been particularly active until the Uranus-Pluto square started coming into orb. And Obama's a good example of someone who's born under the pre previous, under the conjunction of the 1960s. So more than any other presidential candidate, he is carrying the uh, archetypal 
mood and, and promise, as it were, of that era. He's got it within him. He himself recognizes that what he's had to work through in his own life is in many ways what the 60s counterculture was seeking to move towards a resolution of uh, at the time he was born and afterwards. He was born just as the civil rights movement was just rising with great force, 1961. And now uh, here he is under the square in some sense representing uh, the spirit of the time, the zeitgeist. But in general, uh, we know that these two planets will get closer and closer together until they become exact in 2012 and then uh, uh, reach, move back and forth reaching exact alignment several times between 2012, 2015, and really uh, all the way until 2020 that this larger square, 13, 14 years altogether, uh, will be in, in orb. And, but the peak of it is undoubtedly coming during this, these, these next, uh, uh, this next decade. And um, next eight years, uh, we could be more specific. And I think what we can generally look forward to is, um, first of all, more social and political turmoil, uh, an impulse for change, for radical change. That impulse will partly come from uh, the um, reformers and progressive uh, and radical forces within the human community. Um, but it's also going to be the obligation to change coming from external events and forces that have been set in motion by other things over the decades and are now going to require us to, to uh, let go of the past and make changes and, and make radical changes. So it won't always be comfortable. I mean, the, those of us who are progressive in our political and social orientation can tend to think of, I mean, and I think rightly so, these periods are periods of great excitement and energy and, and uh, increase the passion for, um, uh, for creativity in the new and for freedom. But, uh, there is a great potential, you know, Pluto doesn't draw the line in any uh, judicious way. Uh, it's a volcano going off. It's a, it's a, it's a tempestuous energy and people, I mean, the, actually the more we learn and integrate the lessons of the 1960s, the more this next decade will be one that would be more um, uh, judiciously uh, played out so that the powerful forces for change are balanced by adequate recognition of what structures are worth retaining and what disciplines and what um, uh, um, virtues that involve you know, discipline, for example, or rigor, or uh, loyalty, or um, the value, certain values of particular traditions. Not everything should be thrown over or else uh, a lot of um, uh, problematic and in, uh, violent chaos can, can occur. There is a possibility of a kind of um, unleashing of a, of a will to power that is not always life enhancing. It can be, can be destructive and so uh, a lot will depend in these next few years on how well we can balance the, um, the old and the new uh, and the impulse for freedom with the legitimate claims of, of valuable uh, structures and traditions. <laughs>